हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन मैट्रिक्स एनालिसिस विद एप्लीकेशंस आवर टुडे इज लेक्चर इज बेस्ड ऑन इनर प्रोडक्ट व्हाट इनर प्रोडक्ट इज एंड हाउ वी विल सी सम इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ इनर प्रोडक्ट आल्सो सो व्हाट इज इनर प्रोडक्ट लेट अस सी सो लेट एफ बी अ फील्ड ऑफ रियल नंबर्स और द फील्ड ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स एंड वी बी अ वेक्टर स्पेस ओवर एफ एंड इनर प्रोडक्ट ऑन द वेक्टर स्पेस वी इज अ फंक्शन which is denoted by this from v cross v to f satisfying the following properties so these are the four properties which are that uh, inner product must be set must must hold for every x y z in v and for every alpha in field so what are these four properties let us see the first property is the first property is inner product of x cross x is always greater than equal to 0 and uh, it is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 0 this is the first property the second property is inner product of x and y is equal to inner product of y and x whole bar where bar is a complex conjugate the third one is inner product of x plus y comma z is same as inner product of x z plus inner product of y z and the four property is the four property is inner product of inner product of alpha x comma y is same as inner alpha times inner product of x comma y where alpha is any scalar in field okay so if uh, if if you have a function uh, in which is defined like this from v cross v to f satisfying these four properties then that product is called inner product okay and that vector space defined in which this inner product is defined is called inner product space now one important uh, pro uh, property which can be seen from the fourth property you see if you take uh, inner product of uh, x comma alpha y so that will be equal to inner product of alpha y comma x whole bar by second property so this can be written as uh, using using this property this can be written as alpha time inner product of y x whole bar which is equals to alpha bar and the inner product of y comma x whole bar and this is alpha bar and the inner product the complex conjugate of this from the second property is equals to inner product of x comma y so if this scalar is in the second with the second component then it is alpha bar and if it is a first component then it is alpha now let us discuss first few examples based on this the first example is the dot product in rn if we define a dot product in rn which is defined as this then this is a inner product space defines a inner product let us see how you see uh, you are taking v as rn and field as r okay and if you take u as uh, a1 a2 up to an and uh, v as uh, b1 b2 up to bn then the inner product of u and v is simply summation of uh, ai bi i from 1 to n now this can easily be shown you see the first property is inner product of u comma u what is inner product of u comma u it is summation i from 1 to n ai into ai which is simply summation i from 1 to n ai squares or a1 square plus a2 square up to an square and that is always greater than equal to 0 and this inner product is equal to 0 if and only if you see if it is equal to 0 this implies uh, sum of ai is equal to 0 and this implies ai equal to 0 for all i ai equal to 0 for all i okay and this means uh, u equal to 0 and of course if u equal to 0 then this implies inner product of 0 comma 0 is of course 0 by this definition so the first property holds now for second property you can see inner product of u comma v if you write it is uh, a1 b1 plus a2 b2 and so on up to a and b n 
this can be written as b 1 a 1 plus b 2 a 2 and so on up to b n a n. So, this is same as inner product of v comma u because we are talking in real space I mean real field it is a real vector space. So, bar it is itself. Now, the third property is third property is inner product of u comma v comma u plus v comma w is equals to you can see uh, if you if you take uh, w as uh, c 1 c 2 up to c n then this will be equals to uh, summation i from 1 to n it is a i plus b i times c i by this definition which is summation over i a i c i plus summation over i b i c i and this is equal to uh, inner product of u and uh, w plus inner product of v and w. So, third property also holds. Now, the fourth property is inner product of alpha times u comma v is equals to this is summation i from 1 to n. So, it is alpha times a i b i as you can already see and this is equals to alpha times summation i from 1 to n a i b i which is equal to alpha times inner product of u comma v. So, hence we have seen that all the four properties hold over this definition when we define the inner product by this all the four properties hold. So, this defines inner product and the vector space over which this inner product is defined we are calling that vector space as inner product space. So, there may be some other ways also to define the inner product over R n this is this is one of the uh, way we are defining the inner product between u and v. Now, if you take uh, uh, C n I mean vector space as C n over the um, uh, complex field then the inner product may be defined like this ok. This is again formed the inner product this can easily be verified you see we are taking v as c n and field as c ok. Now, inner product of uh, u and v for any u v in c n is defined like this i from 1 to n it is uh, u i is uh, v i is bar conjugate of this. Ah, we are we are taking u as uh, u 1 u 2 up to u n and v as uh, v 1 v 2 up to v n. Okay. So, the first property is that uh, inner product of u comma u it is equal to summation over i u i into u i bar which is summation over i mod of u i squares. This means mod of u 1 square plus mod of u 2 square and so on up to mod of u n square. So, this is always greater equal to 0 for all u. Now, if this is equal to 0 this implies mod of u 1 square plus and so on mod of u uh, n is equal to 0 and this implies uh, mod of u n uh, is equal to 0 for all i and this implies u i equal to 0 for all i and that means uh, u equal to 0. Now, if uh, if u equal to 0 of course, inner product of 0 comma 0 is 0. So, the first property holds. Now, for a second property inner product of u comma v if you take is uh, summation i from 1 to n u i v i bar which can be written as summation i from 1 to n v i u i bar whole bar ok and this is inner product of v comma u whole bar. So, second property also holds. Now, the third property is some inner product of u plus v comma w that is equal to summation u i plus v i into w i bar over i where we are taking w as w 1 up to w n. So, this is summation over i u i w i bar plus summation over i v i w i bar and this is inner product of u and w plus inner product of v and w. The fourth property is inner product of alpha u and w is equals to uh, summation over i alpha u i uh, into w i bar 
which is equals to alpha times summation over i u i w i bar which is alpha times inner product of u and w. So, we have shown all the four properties over this uh, uh, definition that means this defines an inner product over the over the complex uh, uh, over C n over the complex field. Now, similarly we can go for the third uh, problem that if we define a vector space, if we define uh, if we take a vector space of all real continuous functions on the interval on the closed interval a to b and we defined as the product as uh, integral a to b f t g t d t then this defines uh, an inner product very easy to show uh, because uh, you can simply see that uh, if you take f and f inner product of f and f then it is simply f square f square from a to b which is always greater than equal to 0 for every f and if uh, f inner product of f and f is equal to 0 that means integral a to b f square equal to 0 and that is true only when f equal to 0. So, the first property holds. Now, when you take inner product of f and g or g or f both are same because f t into g t is same as g t into f t. Now, inner product of f plus g comma h if you take f plus g into h. So, that property the third property can be directly obtained and alpha times f comma g is you can simply take alpha outside the integration and we can get the fourth property also. So, this uh, definition uh, define inner product uh, on, uh, on the vector space C of closed interval a b. Now, if we take this example we considered all the matrices all the real matrices of order m cross n over the real field and this defines the inner product. How, how it is defined inner product let us see. So, here here we are taking vector space as all matrices of order m cross real matrices of order m cross n and field as real ok. And uh, inner product between matrices a and b we are defined as trace of uh, trace of b transpose a which is simply summation over i summation over j a i j b i j. Now, the first property is that inner product of a and a inner product of a and a means trace of uh, a transpose a which is which means summation over i summation over j a i j is whole square ok. Then that is always greater equal to 0 of course, because it is sum of non negative quantities ok. Now, inner product of a comma a is equal to 0 implies uh, summation i summation j a i j whole square equal to 0 and that is true only when a i j equal to 0 for all i and j and that means matrix a itself is 0 ok. And again if matrix a is 0 the definition uh, trivially holds because uh, it is inner product of 0 and 0 that means trace of 0 transpose 0 which is of course 0. So, the first property holds. Now, if we take the second property that is uh, a and b which is same as trace of uh, b transpose a which is given by a summation i summation j a i j b i j if we this can be written as summation over i summation over j b i j a i j. So, we can easily write it trace of uh, a transpose b which is uh, inner product of b and a ok. Now, a third property is uh, uh, inner product of a plus b and c which is same as uh, trace of uh, trace of c transpose a plus b by the definition which is trace of c transpose a plus c transpose b and this can be written as by the property of trace that trace of c transpose a plus trace of c transpose b which is inner product of c and uh, with inner product of a and c sorry a and c and the plus inner product of b and c. So, a third property also holds. Now, for the last property it is trace of inner product of alpha a comma b is equals to trace of b transpose alpha a which can be written as summation over i summation over j 
uh, here a, uh, a we will, will we will replace a i j by alpha times a i j. So, alpha times a i j because all ma you are multiplying a with alpha. Okay. So, it is b i j this can be written as alpha times summation over i summation over j a i j b i j and this will be alpha times trace of uh, b transpose a or alpha times inner product of a and b. So, hence we can say that all the four properties holds over this definition that means this defines an inner product for this vector space over this field. So, these are the few examples of inner product. Now, when we can say that two vectors are orthogonal. So, two vectors are said to be orthogonal if uh, if the inner product inner product of uh, between them is 0 then we say that uh, u and v are orthogonal. Now, let us see this problem consider vectors u equal to this v and w. The first problem is is u orthogonal to v and w. So, you see uh, here we are defining inner product as a standard inner product that means a dot product if nothing is given that means uh, we are taking the inner product as the uh, dot product of the two vectors. So, what is a dot product of u and v? It is 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 3 is 0 that means u is orthogonal to v it is clear. Now, is u is orthogonal w also? So, let us see 1 into 1 is 1, 1 minus 4 minus 4, 1 minus 4 is minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So, yes it is orthogonal to w also. So, the first part the answer of the first part is yes. Okay. Now, is v orthogonal w? So, to see that v is orthogonal to w try to find out the inner product of v and w and if it is equal to 0 that means v is orthogonal to w. So, you see here 1 into 1 is 1, 2 into minus 4 is minus 8 and 3 into minus 3 is minus 9, it is not equal to 0 clearly. So, v is not orthogonal to w. Now, find a non zero vector w that is orthogonal to u 1 and also u 2. So, what is u 1 and what is u 2? Here u 1 is it is 1 2 1 and u 2 is it is 2 5 4. So, we have to find a non zero vector w which is orthogonal to w is orthogonal to u 1 and w is orthogonal to u 2 also. That means, the inner product of w and u 1 and inner product of w and u 2 is equal to 0. So, so a vector which is orthogonal to these two vector is simply the cross product of these two. Okay. So, you simply find the cross product of these two that is will be a w which is orthogonal to these two vectors. Okay. So, how to find w? So, w will be simply uh, you, you find the cross product of these two cross product of these two will be i j k it is 1 2 1 2 5 4. So, it is i cap times 8 minus 5 is 3 minus j cap time it is 4 minus 2 is 2 plus k cap times it is uh, 1. So, we can say that w is simply uh, 3 minus 2 1 you can you can check also you see 3 into if you take the inner product of uh, w and u 1. So, what is inner product it is 3 minus 4 plus 1 which is 0 inner product of w and u 2 is uh, it is uh, 6 minus 10 plus 4 which is again 0 of course, it will be because it is the cross product of these two vectors and hence w will be orthogonal to these two vectors or the other way out is in fact, in fact a, any alpha times this vector 3 minus 2 1 will be orthogonal to u 1 and u 2 both. Now, how we define orthogonal complements? Let S be a subset of an inner product space V. The orthogonal complement of S denoted by S uh, perpendicular okay, consists of all those vectors in V that are orthogonal to every vector of u belongs to S. Uh, u is a subset of uh, inner product space V. So, this uh, this uh, is uh, orthogonal complement of S which is given by all those V in V such that inner product of V and U is 0 for every U in S. 
in particular for a given vector u belongs to v, we have uh, orthogonal complement of u as uh, or that v which is orthogonal to u, okay. collection of all those v which is orthogonal to u. Now, the first property of this orthogonal complement is that it is a subspace of v. So, how we define uh, orthogonal complement? Orthogonal complement is basically a subset of uh, vector space v which is defined as all those v in v such that uh, inner product of v and u is equal to 0 for all u in S. Hmm, S is a subset of v. Now, in order to show that this is a subspace of uh, this vector space v, let uh, v 1 v 2 in S orthogonal complement and alpha belongs to field. And we have to show that uh, alpha v 1 plus v 2 also belongs to S complement, this to prove. Okay. To show that it is a it is a subspace, we have to show that this also belongs to uh, orthogonal complement of S. So, how we will show this? So, let us try to find out the inner product of uh, this with uh, any u, any u in S for any u in S. Now, this is equals to by the definition of inner product, this is this u plus v 2 comma v 2 comma u. Again this is alpha times inner product of v 1 u plus inner product of v 2 u. Now, since u uh, v 1 and v 2 are in uh, orthogonal complement of S, so this is 0 and this is 0 for any u. So, this is equal to 0. So, we have shown that uh, alpha v 1 plus v 2 belongs to orthogonal complement of S and that means orthogonal complement of S is a subspace of S uh, of V. Okay. Now, we have few geometric interpretations of uh, complement orthogonal complement. Suppose that U is a non-zero vector in R 3. Okay. Then orthogonal complement of a vector U is a plane in R 3 passing through origin and is perpendicular to the vector u. You see what, what is an orthogonal complement? Orthogonal complement of element are all those v in v such that uh, orthogonal complement uh, uh, inner product of v and u is equal to 0 is equal to 0. So, how we can how we can uh, see geometry geometrically? Geometrically it is simply it is simply all the planes it is something like plane you see we have to find out v. All the planes which are passing through origin because it is equal to 0 okay, and perpendicular to u, it is very clear from the definition itself. Now, now let uh, the second one is let w be a solution of a space of an m cross and homogeneous system of equations a x equal to 0. Suppose uh, for this equation for this system of equations the uh, solution is space is w. Okay where A is of matrix A i g and x is a column vector x i. Then each solution w which is given by x 1, x 2 up to x n is orthogonal to each row of A and hence w the kernel space of the linear mapping A from R n to R m is the orthogonal complement of the row space of A. You see uh, here we have a matrix of order uh, m cross n and x is a column vector uh, of order n cross 1. Okay. You see here we are having a into x, a is a matrix a 1 1, a 1 2 and so on up to a 1 n. Similarly, a n 1, a n 2 and a, a m 1, a m 2, a m n and here it is x 1, x 2 up to x n equal to it is 0, 0, 0. What does it mean? This means that when you multiply this row with this column it is equal to 0, the second row with this column is equal to 0, the third row with this column is equal to 0. So, what does it mean? This means that uh, that every row every row is orthogonal to this okay. that is that is what it is, uh, it is uh, here that uh, each solution each solution is orthogonal to each row because the inner product of row and the x i is 
0 ok. So, each solution is orthogonal to each row and hence w is the orthogonal complement of the row space of A. So, this w which is solution space of this is simply uh, the orthogonal complement of row space of A. Row space is a space generated by the rows of A. So, this is uh, all about inner port space. So, in this lecture we have seen that what inner port space is and what are the uh, properties of inner product. We have also seen that if a set is uh, known to you then how we can find out orthogonal complement of that s. Thank you.